Hi, Ron Oglesby here, Chief Solution Architect with Unidesk, and today on the Unidesk Underground demo, we're going to talk a little bit about user installed apps. A hot topic in VDI, it's, it's interesting from my perspective to watch because Unidesk has been talking about it for three years. Uh, we realized early on that VDI, without a lot of desktop control for the end user and the ability to deeply customize their desktop, was just nothing more than a bunch of little terminal servers the same environment that we've been able to use since 1999. Log in, make changes, or maybe not. Log out, any changes you were allowed to make get wiped out and you're reset back to some roaming profile somewhere. So user installed apps have been a hot topic the last five or six months. Lots of companies trying to jump into the space. But what I wanted to talk about today was how Unidesk user installed apps work, why it works better with Unidesk, and of course, give you a little insight and do a demo of user installed apps with what we would call a complex application with services and registry entries and startup settings stuff that uh, other user installed app tools just can't deal with to start off let's start off with our personalization layer and get you to understand why we do this better and why natively it just works with unidesk all unidesk components in the desktop are layered from the operating system on up application and operating system layers are created by it and they're read only which leaves us with a personalization layer that's unique to that user and their machine and really stores any of their changes. Now, a layer contains the file system objects, files, and registry entries that are required by that layer. So the lower level layers are created by IT, they're read only, and the things the user changes or install wind up in their personalization layer. Now, the personalization layer is made up of two types of data. One we call control, which is really user installed apps and registry changes. And the other we call data, which is shortcuts, uh, files, favorites, stuff you might have left on your desktop, you created a directory, etc. Now the interesting thing is that we support any type of application, even ones with services, services that run at startup, etc. Because the personalization layer is there before the machine ever boots. Now the interesting thing about the personalization layer is when the machine is first created, it's empty. It's a blank file, essentially. And anything that happens to that machine is retained. The machine joins boots, it joins a domain, it gets domain SID, applications start running, their UUIDs and app GUIDs get written into the registry, the user creates a profile, the user makes changes to their desktop, and they even install apps. All of that stuff is in their personalization layer, and all of it's retained. The key with this is that there's nothing for the user to learn or deal with. Nothing. If they install an app, if they make a change, it's just there the way they expect it as if they had done it on a desktop, a normal desktop. They don't have to learn about capturing their app a new way. They don't have to learn about launching their app a new way. They don't have to worry, does this app I installed that integrates with IE, is it still there the next time I launch IE after the image has been updated? It all just works and is there as expected. So that's a big thing is user experience. Don't change the user's experience, give them a desktop experience. So what I want to do is go ahead and bring up a desktop here. Very plain Jane desktop, Windows 7, uh, SP1, almost no patches. So this is a very, very base Windows 7 system. And what we want to do is install two types of applications. Now on this desktop, I have a kits folder where I keep various applications, but I want to install a simple app first WinRAR as an example of pretty much a very basic app. This is something that any user installed app had better catch. It's going to install to the C drive, it's going to make a few registry entries, it's even going to change uh, some file associations. But notice as a user I'm just installing the app. I'm not doing anything special, it's just getting installed and it's there and it runs and life is good. We will retain this even after the machine is updated. Now the other app I want to install is a little more complex. I'm going to install iTunes. Now I'm not saying go out and support iTunes in your environment. iTunes is just a great example of a much more complex application. It changes file types, MIME associations, it integrates with Internet Explorer when you're trying to watch videos, it starts up services at startup for the machine, it installs a whole boatload of services in different states, and changes the C drive. So we're going to go ahead and install this and it does take a little bit to install iTunes, so I might fast forward a little bit here in a second, but this is key, a complex application and a shared gold image. What happens to those apps? Now, 
iTunes, not the best of examples in all cases because most businesses don't want people storing their videos and files on their expensive storage, but it's a great example of a complex application and how it's retained after gold image updates, after people log off and go home and IT does their magic behind the scenes. So we're going to go ahead and install this, update the gold image, restart the machine, log back in, and in a Unidesk world, the user doesn't have to do anything. The app is there, it's in the C drive, it's where it's expected. Now while this installs, what I also want to do is show you a little behind the scenes on the back end. If I go to Program Files, and I drill down to WinRAR, WinRAR is actually there. We installed it. It shows up there. It's not put off on some central location. It's not hidden. Anything. The user could actually launch WinRAR from here if they wanted. Their shortcuts, their context menus are all there. Very important that we don't change the way that the apps run, work, or communicate with other applications, especially once you get past the basic stuff, WinRAR, FileZilla, Zip, stuff like that, and you get into more complex interrelated apps and productivity apps. Let's let iTunes finish up here. And there we go. iTunes is installed for the end user. Now here's what I want to show you that gets really interesting is the services. Now just drill into services and applications. First thing I see is Apple mobile device. Uh, we also have the Bonjour service sitting there started, set in automatic. The iPod service. Uh, th this is just digging all over your Windows system. Your application or user installed application tool should be able to capture these and allow them to start right as the machine boots. So let's go ahead. Let's update this guy. This, this app is not spoofed. Uh, remember we went out to WinRAR. You could go out here uh, to Program Files, find the services, find iTunes. All their files are there. Let's go ahead and update this desktop. That's desktop 8, and for uh, speed here, we're just going to update the operating system, uh, even though we could update anything. I'm going to change his gold image from my oldest version to my latest version. And we're going to go ahead and update him now and let that machine reboot. We'll then log back in, check on iTunes, check on WinRAR, and show you how these applications persist even across gold image updates. So now that the desktop is powered back on, we can log back in and see the results of the update. So initially we see our icons uh, still there for iTunes and whatnot, but what I want to do is dig a little bit deeper. Gold image has been updated. We go out to my computer, drill into the C drive, program files, and take a look. Apple software update iPod, iTunes, the files are all there, the registry entries are all there. Uh, same thing with WinRAR. The files are all there, the registry is all there. The, the, the things still launch, they still run. And if we wanted to dig in deep and go out to Control Panel, look at the programs, my Apple software, my stuff is all there, iTunes is there, WinRAR is there, of course, all of my updates from my patch, from my updated gold image, have all been installed now, and nothing has changed. Everything is there for the end user. They want to launch their apps. They can launch them from the shortcuts. They don't have to launch any other secondary apps, and it's just the way they expected it to be, even after you updated the gold image. This is what Unidesk is about, a deep personalized experience for the end user, but IT can still manage the way they want to manage. This is Ron Oglesby. Uh, thanks for watching this Unidesk Underground demo. If you happen to want a one-on-one -on -one demo or you want to have a little deeper discussion, contact our sales department. They'll set you up with a one-on-one -on -one with me or one of the guys on the solutions team. You can also tune into our webinars that we do every other week where we do a product demonstration and a technical deep dive 
uh, with a group of people. We answer a lot of questions. We try to keep it open format, and it'll help uh, to dig into our technology and how we do this and what we do uh, to make this all possible. That's it. Thanks for watching.